Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm going to be talking to you about my book trolley that doesn't have a name but I am wondering about whether I give it one. I now have two actually, I've got a secret one but we'll come to that in a second. I am going to be chatting about what is on my book trolley, how I'm organising my book trolley this year, what I'm going to be putting on it and how I'm going to use it to kind of keep an eye on sort of the magpie nature of my picking what I want on my reading periphery. That was a far too long explanation. Basically, I'm going to use my book trolley this year to sort of try and document how I get books on my TBR and even possibly take them off because there's a couple here that I might shift around because they've been on for a little while and I haven't got to them. Anyway, all that is to come. How exciting. But also at the end, I'd love your thoughts on how I can kind of capture this and make sort of a quarterly thing out of it. Maybe. So where do we begin? Well, I guess we can talk initially about what I was using this trolley for last year, and that was to house any books that I had to read for work that I couldn't talk about, but also it ended up being where I was keeping books that I hadn't wrapped up. I have now done sort of a big wrap up and sort out of it, which I did over on Patreon, where I'm also now doing my monthly sorting the shelves, which is a series of videos I did last year where I reconcile the amount of books coming in with what space I do or don't have on my bookshelves and getting rid of books and stuff. And the reason that I've shifted over there is I've never felt quite comfortable doing unhaul videos. I don't know, there's just something about it I don't quite like. I think it's different if you read a book and you didn't like it, but I kind of feel for me, if I'm just saying, oh, actually I've decided I've gone off it for vague reasons. I don't know, but it's not shade if people do, by the way. Um, but yeah, it's just something that, whereas I feel like for some reason on Patreon, it's a little bit more private, so I don't mind so much. And some tea has been spilt in the latest one. I'll say that much. Anyway, on to what is actually on my shelves currently and how it has ended up here. I thought we'd go through them before we add some more. And the books that I'll be adding will link into some of these. So first up, we have Margaret Atwood's Old Babes in the Wood. Now, I started reading this in January, but I'd forgotten, well, not forgotten, well, I suppose I had kind of forgotten, that I needed to read Alias Grace for Patreon Book Club for January. I ended up getting postponed because sinusitis, but I don't want to talk about that anymore because I'm bored of it already. I had a big, chunky Atwood to read. So once I'd finished the first part, I put it aside. It's a book that I just want to carry on reading and probably will later this month. As I will definitely be reading this, which is The Strays by Emma. Emily Beto, and this is for the February Savage prompt, which is to read a book on the that has been long listed or shortlisted or won the Stella Prize. This won Stella Prize, I think, in 2015. Yes, and this was actually picked from four by my lovely patrons, um, which is very kind of them. And I'm really, really intrigued for this one. For those of you who don't know what the Savage prompts are, they're 13 prompts. There's uh, one for each month plus a bonus one um, that my mum and I are doing together but would love all of you to join in with. We asked you lot for your prompts and you sent in some corkers and we picked some fabulous ones. I think it's probably how we'll do it going forward over the years. I'm very excited to be heading to the Stella. It's a shame almost that we didn't pick it in March because that's when the Stella Prize longlist is announced but so is the Women's Prize longlist and me and mum will be reading all of those. So that could be a little bit too much longlistiness in our lives but i'm very very excited for this one and on an australian theme we have cold enough for snow by jessica Ow, which is the february pick for uh, my patreon book club oh no sorry the strays got cross with me constantly promoting patreon there quite frankly anyway <laughs> I actually will have read this by the time this video goes live because we'll have had book club. It's a short, sharp one. I've got a long train journey coming up. And then these two were, I was going to read these in January because the lovely CJ Reid, I'm going to mention again actually shortly, had picked Jane for the Sunny's book truck, I can't say, Sunny's book truck book club. I've wanted to read this for ages. It's a sort of, it's a documentation in verse of um, the murder of her aunt, who I don't think she ever met, but obviously wanted to find out more about and so did. And then the red part is the autobiography, blah, blah, blah. autobiograph, pause. The red part is the autobiography of a trial, and that is the trial after the murder. And I really like the idea of reading these two in succession and I just didn't get around to it in January. So I think I'm probably going to take these off because I don't think I'm going to get to them imminently because of plans that I have got for February 
that don't include those. Like I said, speaking of CJ Reads, a book that I do want to read pretty soon, frankly, is The Seas by Samantha Hunt, which was CJ's favourite book of last year. And I'm hoping to do a video where I read favourite books by some of my favourite YouTubers and a few more of those will be coming here. So I feel like that's a bit more of a long, like, because I'm not going to record vlogs this year necessarily like all, sorry, that's not true. I'm not going to do themed reading vlogs this year all in one week necessarily. I might record different uh, thoughts about books at different points and then put them all together at some point, if that makes sense. But yeah, the seeds is something that I want to do soonish. I'm going to pop that there because this I think is going to be a shelf that I use for sort of future videos. I'm worried that there's a little bit. Of... Is that better? Is it better or has it made absolutely no difference whatsoever? I don't know, it's a bit hazy, maybe it's the lighting. Anyway, moving on um, to Isabel Colgate's The Shooting Party. Now I heard about Isabel Colgate through Sarah Winman when she posted about another of her books, Isabel Colgate's books, not Sarah's own books, which are fabulous, and how much she enjoyed it. And so I went off and had a look. So I was like, if Sarah likes it, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna, because I like Sarah's writing and I like the way her mind works and stuff and I just like her. And I found this one and this seemed perfect because apparently Julian Fellows based Downton Abbey are after have no, use this to create Downton Abbey-ish. It was kind of um, inspiration for Downton Abbey, that's what I mean. And I have been loving Downton Abbey. I watched the first series when it first came out and sort of lost interest because the adverts were so blinking along. But because it's been on Netflix, I have had the pleasure of watching blinking loads of it. In fact, I've recently finished the series, I'm feeling a little bit rough, but I'm having a break before the movies because I don't want it to end. Anyway, um, that has made me want to head to this book and indeed possibly have a look at some other big house energy books, maybe. So this one is one that I feel like, yeah, I'd quite like to read that in February if I can. And then this will probably be part of a longer project in terms of filming and stuff because I have a lot of other books that I want to include in this video, like on my periphery and sort of note it down and I'm going to treat myself to the most often because they're import, well, they'll predominantly be imported books. Um, however, this one isn't, it's The Illness Lessons by Claire Beams. And I've had this on my shelf for ages, along with other books, which we'll talk about shortly. And I've been meaning to get to it, but I'd sort of forgotten about it a little bit. It's about, a, well, it's kind of got an, a pandemic edge to it, which I think is what probably put me off, but it's also set in a girls' school, which I think is something, again, I could possibly do. I've got quite a lot of books. I don't like dark academia, but I do like books set in boarding schools. What's that about? Is it because I loved The Worst Witch when I was younger? I don't know. I was reminded about Claire Beams when I was reading my short story advent calendar in the lead up to Christmas last year, and I can't recommend getting it enough later this year, I can't believe I'm talking about Christmas and Advent comes already, but never mind. because every year that I've done it, and I haven't done it every single year over the last few years, because sometimes I've been too late, but every year I have done it, I've absolutely loved it and discovered some fabulous authors, more of which I'll talk about shortly. Now, like I said, that's a bit more long term, so I'm gonna pop that down there. Or maybe I should put, is it better to have it there? Can you see it? A tiny bit more there. So that's those. Then that's the C's again, which I mentioned earlier. Now, another series of videos that I really want to do is um, a series of videos where people recommend me three books and I go off and read them and see what I think. And I've managed to record it with a few people so far. I've realised I'm missing a selection, actually, because I've recorded it with Hany Anagahara. That's the selection I'm missing, so I need to watch back what she recommended and find them. But these three are books that are recommended by Mini Driver. We've got Send News by Sabah Sounds, which is a short story collection she said was amazing. We've got My Name is Yip by Paddy Crew, which is a Western, and I've wanted to read a Western ever since I loved C. Pam Sang's book so much. I think I have read one other Western. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. And we have that one. And then she recommended Sorrow and Bliss to me, but I'd already read it for Scarlet's Book Club. And so I thought instead I'd pick You Be Mother by Meg Mason and see how I get on with that one. So that's those. Now, do I put that, is that a longer term? It will be because I'll be doing it over different months. So pop those there. And then, in fact, let me move that one over there. Gosh, I'm getting pedantic and you're getting all of the joy of it. And um, then I have, uh, I had 
I did the same thing with Tamor Sumru in a video which I will link down below. The others were all for Sky Arts Book Club. Um, and he recommended me three debuts, one of which is A Case of Exploding Mangoes by Mohammed Hanif. He also talked about Deeper and a rapper's Gym Patrol on the Purple Line as being a corking book. And I've got another one of those that I will go. I feel like there was another one as well. I need to think on that. I need to go back and rewatch and pay more attention, clearly. But the lovely Anton Herr also recommended me some books. He recommended me All the Lovers in the Night by Miko Kawakami, translated by Sam Brett and David Boyd, and also Abandoned by Sangeeta Bandio Padhai, who I have already read Panty by and thought was really interesting. So really looking forward to this one. It's translated by Aranaba Sinner. And um, yeah, so those two are there. There's another book though that you recommended, which we'll come to shortly. But before that, well, I should say, we're now going on to adding books from me having sorted out the shelves at the end of the month. And so three books that I'm popping up here because I need to read them in February are The Key in the Lock by Beth Underdown, as I'm doing an event with her and also Amelia Hart, who's written Wayward, uh, towards the end of February so obviously have those read as I am doing an event with and I'm so excited about this event not that I'm not excited about that one I am but I met this author before and I just adore her and we just got on like a house on fire so this is gonna be really cool and also I really really loved her debut novel this is her second um it's The Spell of Good Things it's by Aobami Adebayo and I'll be doing an event with her in Manchester at the end of February I'll be doing an event with these two in Liverpool so those kind of need to be read pretty urgently. Now I mentioned themed vlogs and I've got quite a few here that I would like to do. So first up is, as I mentioned, with the lovely CJ Reads and the Seas, I want to read some other of my favourite booktubers' favourite books of the year. Slug by Holly Manish was Lauren of Lauren and the Books' favourite book of last year and looks like a really interesting way of looking at um, poetry. Then both Nathan of Nathan's Nook and Jalen of the Bar and the Bookcase loved the sluts. And this is supposed to be very experimental, a um, bit saucy, which I'm here for this year because I've read a couple of saucy books that I've absolutely loved, as you'll have seen in my wrap up. It's told, I think, through a website and adverts for Escort. So that sounds intriguing. And the lovely Benjamin uh, Green of Benjamin's Journal. I'll link all these channels down below. Oh, and I've realised I've forgotten to add Eleanor Knows by Claudia Pinheiro because that was Jen's favourite book of last year. So I'll get that in a bit. This was Ben uh, of Benjamin's Journal's favourite book last year, Josephine Hart's The Stillest Day. So I have that there ready for when I'm in the mood. Going back to Savage Prompts, in March, the prompt is to read books with your favourite colour on the cover. And my favourite colour is purple. And a couple of books, one that I bought and one that I was sent last year, had purple covers. And I thought that would be quite a fun reading blog. I think I did it years ago with books with yellow covers, maybe. Um, anyway, I bought Sula by Toni Morrison because I absolutely love The Bluest Eye by her earlier this year. So we'll pop that. Oh, that's a bit further away, I guess. So we'll pop that one down. Oh no, I'm getting myself all of a muddle, all confused there. Then I was very kindly sent Joloff Rice and Other Revolutions by Omolola Ejioma Ogunyemi. And this is interlinking short stories that start off in Nigeria and then sort of spread out around the world. And I just think that sounds incredible. So we'll pop that there. And the other one that I've taken off my shelves, I've had it on there for ages, but I'm gonna read in March even has purple in the title. I can't actually believe I've not read this. It's The Colour Purple by Alice Walker. Again, I've only heard amazing things. So there we go, that's that one. So they're all on the bottom, lovely stuff. I need to find Hanya's books and add those. Actually, two that I can add straight away are another book that Anton Ho recommended me was Please Look After Mother by Kyung Suk Shin, who Anton now translates and whose violets I absolutely loved last year. So I need to pop that with his other recommendations just there there we go and take one of Tamar's other recommendations for me was where angels fear to tread um by ian forster and this could link with another reading vlog that i'm going to do quite soon i think 
Oh, now that's going to be interesting. Can I cross pollinate vlogs, as it were? And um, because what I'd really, really like to do is I'm off um, to Italy soon. And while I'm there, I'd like to read some short, sharp, queer fiction. And Ian Forster was closeted but queer and where angels fear to tread is set in Tuscany. So I thought that'd be a good one to take. And then some of the potentials are uh, Giuseppe Caputo's An Orphan World, which is translated by Ju... Uh, now, is that Juana or Juana Adcock and Sophie Hughes? This was recommended to me by Niven Govindan, who I'd love to do, actually, a recommendations video with. That'd be fun. He said it was incredibly saucy, but also deeply, deeply moving. So that's one that I'm very intrigued to get to. Let's put you that way like that. Then Lie With Me by Philip Besson which again, a queer story, very short, very sharp, meant to be absolutely incredible and quite um, like an emotional gut punch. Interesting, two books in translation there. Oh no, come on now. Oh, this is a trouble with a trolley, isn't it? We also have Marlowe by J. Carmichael, which is out, I think it might be out this month. Um, I read his debut Ironbark, which hasn't been published in the UK, and this one has, which I find quite interesting, but this is about a, Love story between two men in 1950s Australia when it was very conservative and yeah, so that one again intrigues me. Also, I like the idea of this one because it's like got pictures and stuff in it, which I just think is going to be quite interesting and like add a layer to it maybe. So yeah, got that one. And we have off my poetry shelves, but I think this is a mixture of poetry and vignettes and possibly might be something that I read before I go maybe. Um, it's Inside Out by Joseph Osmondson and I think... Joseph has written a non-fiction book and I really, really, I, th I don't know whether it's comparing the pandemic to like the AIDS crisis, but it looks at, I think, how contagion almost, no, is that the right word I want to use? I can't think of the word I want to use, but that. But this is, I think, a, uh, a queer tale first. So some fiction slash poetry there. Also on the back, it says memoir. So it looks like it's a real blend of all sorts of things, which again, is something that I love. Now, a book that could fit in with that, but could also be for a different theme vlog that I'm planning on doing is The Skin is the Elastic Covering that Encases the Entire Body by Bjorn Rasmussen. This is a Danish, or I should say it's translated by Martin Aitken. And this is a, a coming of age tale um, set in Denmark and sounds really interesting. So yeah, that could go there. However, the, this, the cover of this links into another video that I'd quite like to do, of which actually yeah, there's a couple of books I could pull off the shelves and I haven't, shame on me. These also fall into that category and that's books that have horses on the cover. So you've got Kick the Latch by Catherine Scanlon, which is a vignette um, life story, I think, of a woman who works at a race course. You've got Harrow by Joy Williams. I don't know what this one's about. I just wanted to read Joy Williams because I kept hearing about her from lots of different random people. And then we have The Country Life, which I've heard has nothing to do with horses, but still has a horse on the cover. And also I'm kind of glad it hasn't got everything to do with horses because that could get too horsey and say me. Again, why? I might not do that over a week. I might do that over several months. But yeah, I've been meaning to read Cusk for ages. Loads of people have been raving about it. I feel like I want to be part of that party. So I'm going to pop that one there. And then to join um, Claire Beans down here um, with other authors that I've read short stories by out of the short story I've encountered and would like to get to fairly soon, we have what we have... Oh, blah, blah, blah. We show what we have learned in other stories by Claire Beams. So after having loved a short story, I'd like to read that one. Um, Robert McGill's A Suitable Companion for, for the End of Your Life, which was kindly sent to me by Keisha Cooper um, from my wish list, which is linked down below. And then we have My Volcano by John Elizabeth Stinsey. Now, I don't know where the tab has gone from who sent me it. And I'm so sorry. I need to find where I first talked about this, which is a video that I ended up not using. So I need to, yeah, find that. But thank you, thank you, thank you. It means a lot. Did I say who it's by? Sorry, it's My Volcano by John Elizabeth Stinsey, who I think could be a favourite author, even though I've not really read anything apart from one short story. I just have this feeling. And then I have The Prince of Mournful Thoughts and other stories by Caroline Kim, who's was the first story in the advent calendar of short stories. And um, Robert McGill's, I should say, was a brilliant story about, um, I keep wanting to say Anne Tyler just because I've just read it, and then I want to say Laurie Moore, and that isn't right either. It is Alice Munro, neither of those people. And then last but not least, 
some books that I have to read this month because when I did the sorting out my shelves, there wasn't room for these on my shelves. So I need to get some and I'm trying to do more first in, first read before being first out. So we have, oh, that's upside down. That's really thrown me. We have uh, The Furrows by Namwali Sir Pell. We have Where I End by Sophie White. All these I talked about in a wrap up recently. Uh, Things They Lost by Okwiri Adul. And The Falling Thread by Adam O'Riordan. Now, if I have not read those by the end of the month and there isn't space to put them on those shelves, then, well, first in, first out. Ooh, that feels a bit, ooh, but sometimes I've got to learn. So there we go. Now what I'd like to know from you is, because you saw me getting rid of a couple of these in this video, not getting rid of them, they're just going back on the shelves because I had lots of space on my non-fiction shelves, because I had a massive cull before Christmas. What was it in between Christmas and year? Anyway, it doesn't matter, it was last year. So last year. I would love to know how I can document this to make like a quarterly video. Is it something I should do snippets of when I shift things around a bit? How would you like to see it? Or would you like to see it? Is it something you're even that bothered about seeing? Are you fussed about me whipping my book trolley out every now and again? Let me know in the comments down below. But as always, thank you for your... Well, I'd never say it like that. I was going to say thank you for joining me. I don't say that often, but thank you for watching. Thanks for spending time with me. I hope you're all doing as well as can be. And I will see you in another video very, very soon. Bye. I want to see my mum's bye. Bye.